Hi guys, I just want to show you my second um, Stitch Collab, Collab 7 project and this is for Jeanette at My Cottage Crafts and she asked for similar colours to, excuse my fingers, I've been gluing, um, similar colours to, um, to Anne. Let me just move that away, it's casting a shadow. And so um, I must be honest, this one, um, I really loved the layout when I first started it and then it's, I don't know, it started doing my head in. Um, how to decorate and I can't tell you how many things I put on and took off. It was just ridiculous um, It's not quite finished. I'm going to do something here and um, and uh, And then I'll show you it finished, but I didn't show you the process of this one one because I struggled with it and two um, because I did it really at night and in front of the TV so I just wanted to show you um, what I did. I laid it out the same way I did Anne's, and I think I laid them. I did them. I think I laid them out both at the same time because they were similar colours. Um, there's old and new fabrics in there. This is old hemp. These are, th that's a Japanese uh, fabric. That's a French general fabric. Um, that's just a linen um, cotton combo. Um, it's actually kind of like a, a Japanese or Chinese fabric, but I quite like it with the script. This is vintage or antique French fabric, like mattress ticking. And then I've got like old laces on top. And then that's an antique hemp tea towel. And so I did, I had the same um, fabric sample with the grey blue sort of flowers on them. And so I put one similar to Anne's on Jeanette's as well. Um, and I've just done embroidery here and there. I chose... Um, I probably chose the darker color, the lighter color, and then an intermediate color. There were a few other colors in it, but I left those blank. And then I did this butterfly. So I needle turned the wings, and then I've totally, I don't know if you can see it, but I've totally embroidered the, I'll put it down in the light, um, the center of the butterfly. And then I put embroidery on the wings. Um, and then here I've just put an antique or vintage yo-yo, I should say, on here and put the little fluffy bits like my mum taught me. And um, and then it's all slow stitched behind with the borrow stitch or the canther stitch. And, um, and I'm just going deciding what to put on this piece. And this is just a piece of fabric that I kind of painted. Um, but I like the colours with this. And so I think I'm going to leave that there and put something there. So I will come back when it's done. Thank you for watching. And it'll be attached at the end of this video. So I am back with an update on Jeanette's um, project and I didn't show you um, as you saw in the first bit of the video the first few minutes um, how I put hers together but it was similar to Anne's um, but I'm going to make her bag different hers yeah her bag different to Anne's and um, so what I've done is I've cut a square of hemp Sorry, I've got bits everywhere. Got a, I cut a square of hemp, okay? Well, I, I eyeballed it, actually. I didn't I didn't measure it, you know me. And then I, <laughs> I lay the hemp, and it's gone all wonky, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's what you've always got to tell yourself. Don't fret. So um, I, um, um, I lay uh, this, isn't that pretty, um, on the reverse side. And then I, what I did was I pinned them and then I tacked it. I tacked it around the edge and I tacked, first I tacked down there, I tacked down there and then I tacked around the edges and took my pins out. And I used um, a bit of washi tape and I brought the washi tape down here and then I put another one and another one. And I did not measure anything, I eyeballed it. Um, and I attached all the washi tape in rows. So one washi tape was here. In between, basically in between the stitches there was no there wasn't there was washi tape down there then I left a gap and then there was another washi tape and then I left a gap and then there was another washi tape and basically I just stitched in between on both sides of the washi tape and then took it off and then I put it on the other diagonal and I did the same again so that way you got your crisscross I haven't bothered going here because you'll see why. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make like an envelope. And so it's all a bit of an experiment. So you kind of need the square. So this is going to go across like this. And then this is going to fold up like this. And then you're going to have an envelope. But it's going to be a pouch. But I'm going to edge it like I did Anne's. 
with bits of um, fabric. Uh, these are about two inches. I didn't measure them, I eyeballed it as usual. And so I'm going to lay them around. I've got pins here, just a sec. Um, and I'm going to pin them on. So let's just muck around with it for a minute. This is how I do it. Just eyeball it, just fold that in half and give it a crease and then put it there. So Anne's I needle turned hers, but usually um, when I've done this before with you guys, I've just left it raw. But the other times I've done it with the sewing machine, this time I'm hand stitching everything. I'm not machine stitching. So I'll probably put that one there. Oh, that one went up there. That one has, it's got edged. So that one's going to go there, but that will go. First, I need to put one of these there. So up here. I'm going to pin it on that side because that's the side I'll be looking at when I'm stitching. So I'll just put my pin there for a minute while I put in this one as well. I think I'll have that there. Oh, wrong way. Like so, and I'll pin that. Okay, so we'll keep on working down here. I'm getting sidetracked, aren't I? Um, other pieces I probably lost a few pieces because I had pulled them all out and um, and then took them all off because I felt like I needed to do I wanted then I then decided to line it and um, quilt it but there's no wadding or anything like that so it's not like traditional quilting where you have a third layer in the middle where you know a bit of padding I don't have that in there there's no padding put that there I'll put this one here. So I sort of try to mix up the, the patterns of the fabrics. That there, and we'll have the dot. Now, with this, I don't need to go all the way up the side because you're not going to be able to see it. So there I only need a small piece. I think I've lost some pieces. I'll need to grab some more. Whereas this side, I need to come all the way down the side because you'll be able to see the majority of it. So let's just flip it over. So I need to go just over halfway on that one. If I do it like this, it's easier. That, I have that bit there. It's so gonna have big and small pieces. Honestly, guys, I don't measure anything. I just jiggle it along until it does what I want. And here we will have dots. This is a French linen, actually. I think I got, yeah, I got it um, at a craft fair here, but it's French. And we'll have this one. And if it's not, oh no, wait just a minute, I've got to trim that off. If it's not exactly the, you know, the same amount on each side of the piece, just trim it down. That's that one, put that one there, fold it over. So I'm trying to pin them where they overlap too, just to sort of hold it in place when you're working. And I'll grab this nice long one. Put that there. Okay, and I need, I've lost some pieces, just a minute. Let me hop up and get some more. I must have them here.
found some a few more pieces that I had cut because it did go all the way around yesterday when I tested it. So um, we'll put. Oh, I think I might sneeze. Oh, that's pretty. We'll put that one. Maybe I'll separate these two just a mini. We'll put this one here. That one, oh, that one will go right to the end. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And then we'll have a look and see if we like it. And we'll put that one there just to make sure we've got enough. They might not even be able to see that one. And we'll put this one over here to cover that. And then I just need a piece to cover the end there. And then we'll have a look. Might put, even put that one like that. Okay, let's have a look. So that's the top. So those go in. Like that. And then that will go up. And then that will come down like that. So that's going to be our envelope. And then I was wondering if I might like something hard to tell now with all the what could go there so we'll do that we'll worry about that afterwards so I'll show you what I'm going to do and then I'll do it off screen I'm going to use now what thread am I going to use I think I'll use the same thread I used to quilt it with which is just a perle cotton I think that's what I'll use Where's a good needle? <laughs> Hard to find a good needle in this bunch. Yep, it's bent. They're all bent. We'll do our quilters knot. Okay. And then I'll start here. I'm going to do three rows. Well, that's, oh, look at that piece. That piece is no good. I have to trim that down. Crazy piece. There we go. Easy peasy. So, I'll just hold that there. I mean, I'm not going to have hidden knots or anything like that now. I just I know what's annoying me is this piece here. When you first get started, the first uh, the first amount of stitches is a bit fiddly for a minute, and then it's okay once you sort of get it all going. And all you're going to do is running stitch. Along your piece. As I said, you could very easily machine stitch it. But this is a slow stitching project, so I'm not doing any machine, machine stitching. And I'll probably do three rows. I think I'll see what what I how I feel about it as I go
Now, I've never made one of these before. I just, I'm making it up as I go. I have seen them, but I haven't made one before. I'm a sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now I get all sniffly. When you sneeze, you sniffle. Okay, and then I'll come around here. I'm just making sure I capture the um, the square. Tell you what, life is different once you remove those pins. You feel like things are much more secure. feel like I'm finally getting somewhere with Jeanette's. I feel like I've been, um, because I, as I said before, I've been unhappy with it and I'm picking things, putting things on, taking them off, going bananas. Um, I feel like I've been at it for a really long time, even though I haven't. The only thing I'd done while I was doing Anne's was pin it together. I hadn't done any embellishing yet. But once I started doing that, I didn't like it. <laughs> See, I'm not quite onto the to the base there. I'm just going to slide down. I don't know. Oh no, that, I'm not going to be able to see there at all because that's it's going to come down here. Going to be on tucked away. Hopefully you can see, it's just running stitch. And you can see the neat little stitches on the other side and just a little teeny, catch a little bit of the fabric and do a little teeny tiny knot. So that's going to be, see that's going to tuck up there, that's going to go like that, and that's going to tuck up there, but I haven't finished my stitching yet. Cute. Okay, so I'll finish that, um, you know, just the stitching, and then we'll, and then I'll show you how I'm thinking I'm going to construct it, and I might decide to put something on it. I don't know decide to put that there or there like that sort of thing I don't know I have to have a think about that but I have plenty of time to think about it while I stitch around it so I will be back again soon okay so here I am back again I continued on and did all my stitching around these bits here and I also applied 
um, this vintage embroidery here and here. Now, when I fold it, now the way I chose how to, where to put it was I had this all pinned shut. So these are going to close in here like this. They're not going to, I'm not going to bring them right to the center because then it will be a funny shape. Then I have to fold it up too much. I'm going to bring them in just like that. Kind of crease it. I'm eyeballing it. And I'm not measuring anything. Move that out of the way. And then this. So probably I didn't need to bring this um, binding right all the way around here. I probably could have gone just halfway and it might have been probably a better deal but if you pinch it down should be right and then you get this and fold it up like so then I'm going to get some pins and I'm going to pin it I'll pin one side first it's only just covering it because I didn't want to bring them in too close but you make sure you pin it in there so I'll just say so you can see it's just Come on, I've just it's just catching it, okay. All right, and then this one goes in, and it's the same deal. Maybe I can bring it in and just a little bit more because it looks that's better, that's more straight. So I'm using my map a little bit here to tell me. Oh no, that's too much. You see, I'm li I'm li lining it up with the with the line there. So that's it. That's a good idea. There you go. Use your mat. And that's that. And that's good there. And so I'll pin that. That's very, you know, winging it a little bit. It's all winging it. And I'm putting, I'm just putting my hand in. When I pin it, I'm just going to try and be careful that I don't um, pin it shut. Okay. So that's going to be that. So let's stitch that shut. My hands are a bit cold, so I don't know how well I'm going to go with the stitching. Um, where are my scissors there? Okay. I'm using the same thread that I used for this um, and also for my, um, what do you call it, my quilting. Make sure you get an, a long enough piece. Do my quilters knot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this might be the most fiddly bit. I'm putting my finger right in there into the corner. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to put my knot in there. Tuck it in. Just tuck it in with your needle there and catch the fabric there. And we're just going to do overcast stitch or whip stitch, whatever you want to call it. So I put my needle here. I came here. I came um, up. I'm going to put my needle in, um, just on the on the fabric, and then slide it forward. So you put. I've come up here. I'm putting my needle in here, and then I'm going to slide it forward. I don't want to come too far forward because you want it to be strong. So you don't want big, you know, wide apart stitches I just want to make sure just get and always with sewing you must always double check that everything's okay and I could probably even go like this because it's that thick yep and just check and then um, it's that thick that you probably won't stitch it shut but you can just check before you pull your stitch through yep and that way you're holding it in place I'm not checking because I can feel that it's not stitched right through. Yep. And I'll keep my pin in there until I go beyond it. I'll just check that one was a bit thinner. So we want to make sure we capture enough of the fabric. Because you don't want it to sort of come undone. Oh, and another thing that I also did was I just went and did this same stitch but with a thinner thread all the way along the edges just to make sure. I mean, it's all stitched down, but that will limit um, the fraying of the fabric too because I didn't tuck it under. 
But you know me, I like the wonky wobbly look. Good thing because, I mean, that's what I managed to do, isn't it? The wonky wobbly look. And I like doing this with the with the um, embroidery floss because you can see it. Adds a bit more texture to it. Very easy, very easy to do. Easy peasy pouch. It's an easy peasy pouch. So I might end that off. I'm just gonna go through to the back. Get a few stitches there so it's extra strong. Actually, I might, I might just, well, actually I can turn it inside out afterwards and then I will, I think I'll stitch those bits down. I'll show you at the end. Just to finish it off a bit better. Okay, now am I going to have enough? I think I am. All right. Oh, I need to relax. My back's hurting. Okay. <sighs> those plugs are going to be the death of me. They are. Every time I trip. Oh, that's cool. What is it? It's a pouch. Cool. Look. Envelope pouch. Nice. Look at that. Pretty. Pretty. Pre parody. Parody. It's parody. It's parody. The parody. It's parody. The parody. I don't know where. I think I might have heard that in a, in a movie. I don't know. Yep, not going through. Just double check every so often. Because otherwise you have to unpick a whole lot if you get it wrong. But because it's um, you know, double layer, and then you've got also the binding, um, you're going through quite a few layers. So chances are you won't stitch it shut. not make it with this thread I might have to get a new thread so it as has it actually has taken a bit of time to make this pouch there's was um, a whole evening of quilting quilting it and then there was another whole evening of um, stitching the um, the edging on a whole lot of faffing about making decisions changing I, I had chosen a different fabric as the base and I didn't like it with the colors I didn't think it went with the colors it had too much blue in it just do another knot there just to be sure I made it now I didn't bring my other thread in here um, oh, I can use the sewing machine thread so that's that if you wanted to you could tuck that down hmm, I might like that more I think I am gonna tuck that down I like that tucked down okay um, well I'm gonna grab my mm. grab some sewing sewing machine thread So I think I'll try and turn this inside out now. And what I want to do, this is what it looks like on the inside. And what I want to do here, just to make it extra strong. Oh, it's pretty on that side too. What I'm going to do here 
is I'm just going to stitch down this so it doesn't, you know, look, it just flaps up. So I'm going to make sure it's extra strong. And I'm just going to do it with this thread. I've already got a knot. Well, that'll do it. So we're just going to stitch this down to make it a bit neater. And that's pretty much the same as what I did all along the edge of my raw edge binding as well. Did the same thing. It's pretty fast. Except for when you get a knot. I'm just making sure I capture this fabric because it's fraying a bit. I think these would be very nice to make for journals and things too. You just adjust the size of your square to the however big you might need it. You might need a bigger than what this is. So that's that. And I'll just knot it like this twice. But I'm not going to cut it off because what I'm going to do now is fold that down. I'm going to come in and stitch that down. go and now I'm going to come along and stitch this down see I don't want that all flapping up gosh my hands are cold makes it for a very painful business nearly there and then I'll show you um, well first of all I've got to think about the closure and then I'll show you um, I finished Jeanette's block Okay, so we'll cut that, and that's the inside, and let's flip it back out. It's all nice and strong now. So as far as construction, it's fairly simple. And we've got a lovely fabric envelope. Put a little journal in there. Okay, cute. And fold it down. 
So now I'm going to think about a closure and just want to hop up for a second. I have this sari silk. Don't want that one, this one. This one's in pieces. I think it is. Maybe it's not. I thought it was in pieces. Oh no, it's not. I'm unraveling the whole thing. Here I go. I think this one is the best one. So. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Big sneeze. Um, okay, so I'm going to stitch that there and that will how long is that that might not be long enough I can't remember who I bought yes that is perfect okay so I trim that off I don't actually have gray gray Okay, so I think I'll use my embroidery floss again to stitch that on, just to make sure, you know, it's nice and strong thread. Whoops. Pull that down, okay. So I'm just going to hold that there like that and tuck that in. So I'm actually going to go all the way around and do it the same method as before. And there's plenty of layers here, so you don't need to go right through to the front. Oh, that's hard. There we go. I should put my um, thing on to help me pull it. So very, very simple. Okay, and then I'll tie a knot there. And you could, um, if you wanted to, stitch a little thing on the end here, you know, cover it with fabric and stitch that on there if you wanted to. And so that's my could put a button on I just like wrapping things around like that and then you can even wrap it around to the back and tuck in there and that's the back so I put a little bit of embroidery there as well and that's the front a little bit of embroidery there I think I was quite happy with how that turned out so this is uh, Jeanette's piece finished piece with her pouch and she'll get some fabrics in there as well um, so there's the butterfly. I think I showed you that before with all the little um, French knots and um, pistol stitches and little um, lazy daisy chain stitches, single chain stitches. Um, embroidered all of this here. It's all canthus stitch except for that patch there. Um, this was a little piece I painted and I did little sprigs on there. Vintage yo-yo. I didn't put any buttons on. I didn't want to overdo it. So, um, Jeanette, if you want to add some buttons, you can. Um, but I didn't put any. And so that is it. And that's the back. Not too bad. That's, yeah, lots of stitches. So I hope you like that, Jeanette. Um, 
it was a lot of fun to make a little bit um difficult at times because i couldn't decide what to do because i'd just done a gray one um gray and beige and cream um but it did get i did i'm happy with it now so there you go so i hope you enjoyed that and i am on to the next one and it's for my sister that'll be a doozy so thank you for watching bye